So the, the <coughs> lowest rib that attaches to the common cartilaginous bar is 10. One above it is 9. So pick up, see, look for your X in the mid axillary line. Now walk your fingers along the rib and you're just familiarizing yourself with the plane or the orientation of this rib. Now you're going to find high variability amongst people. People with really narrow chests from front to back have much more obliquity to that angle of the rib. People who have got respiratory disorders, asthma, COPD, they're more barrel chested, the chest is more inflated. The, the line of, of the rib, the orientation of the rib is different. And then you have everything in between, all right? So you can't make an assumption as, well, where is this rib anyway? So follow the rib all the way to the front. See if you can feel where the rib connects to the cartilage. Now, in a normal healthy thorax, that's very difficult to feel. But if you have something called Tietze's disease or costochondritis, um, you may find some swelling at that joint line, some tenderness and swelling at the joint line. Or if there has been a direct blow to the chest or a, a fracture, you may find that some of the, the rib actually separates or becomes strained at these joints and the alignment may be, may be off, particularly higher up in the chest, okay? Now go find, uh, we actually didn't mark the fourth thoracic ring with an X in the axilla, so count up from nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And if you are palpating the male chest, it is totally okay to follow the fourth thoracic ring all the way to the sternum. In the female chest, it depends on the mass of the breast, how big it is in terms of whether you feel through it. And also, ask permission, right? Just sort of say, look, I really want to sort of see what's going on at these joints under here. Are you okay if I just palpate through this tissue? Most of the time, they will say yes. But never assume that it's okay to palpate a woman's breast, all right? So, right the way through, feel where it attaches. Now, find the manubrial sternal junction. So, the second rib actually articulates with both the manubrium and the sternum. So, if you walk your fingers out laterally from the manubrial sternal junction, you'll be on the costal cartilage of the second thoracic ring. Now, the second thoracic ring tends to hang like a necklace uh, on the thorax, which means that <laughs> if you continue to walk your fingers laterally in a straight line, and you keep going laterally towards the shoulders, you will end up on the third rib, not the second, okay? So if you watch the screen, I'm on the second rib, and if I'm thinking, okay, I wanna get onto the third, and you keep walking out laterally, often you'll end up on the third because the second ring actually curves up and goes under the clavicle. So follow the anatomy of the second ring. Don't worry so much about whether one side's more prominent than the other. We'll get into positional screening later. But just see, familiarize yourself with the plane and the orientation of that second ring. And note how if you go straight laterally, you actually hit some soft space, the intercostal space, and then come on to the third ring if you're out further laterally, okay? So we're gonna be doing some ring corrections where you're on second ring and on third ring. And so it's really important to be, from the front, really important to be able to landmark and know, is this two, is this three, is this four? Where's two, where's three? Where's four? This is a much easier place to do your positional testing and your landmarking than it is on the back, because on the back it's under a whole bunch of muscle and it's covered by the scapula. Okay?